now let us assume that the impulse response and the input both do have a discrete time Fourier transform. So, let us assume this situation. You have an MSI system, impulse response HN, input XN, output YN and we assume that X omega exists, H omega exists and y omega also exists, all of them exist. We ask what is the relation between y omega, x omega and h omega. Now, we would again first like to obtain this relation without the mathematics and then we shall do the mathematics. Without the mathematics, what is the interpretation of x omega? x omega is nothing but the component of the sequence along e raise to the power j omega n. So, focus your attention on that particular component of the input along the angular frequency omega. When you are applying x n to this LSI system, you see what are you applying? You agree that when we apply x n, we are actually applying minus pi to pi x omega e raise to the power j omega n d omega to the system. Now, invoke the property of homogeneity and additivity or linearity if you like. You can think of x omega as a constant and the integral is required to or rather additivity is required to act on the integral. So, you are saying take a combination of many different e raise to the power j omega n's here for different values of omega and that combination is taken by the integration. Now, x omega requires homogeneity, it is a constant. So, multiply each of these vectors by a constant x omega integrate or add over all such components, take the addition to its limit and make it an integration. What will modulate the property of LSI systems? What will the output be to e raise to the power j omega n? It is going to be h omega times e raise to the power j omega n. Because of homogeneity, when you multiply it by x omega, the output is going to be x omega times h omega e raise to the power j omega n. Because of additivity, when you integrate this over all omega, the output will also get integrated over all omega. So, it is very clear that y omega is going to be integral, in fact, let us write on the next page, y omega is going to be integral. Of course, you know, I have forgotten a factor of 2 pi, I did not pay too much of attention to that. So, let me put that factor of 2 pi back again here. y omega is going to be 1 by 2 pi x omega times h omega e raise to the power j omega n d omega from minus pi to pi. But you see y omega is also equal to 1 by 2 pi into, I am sorry, y n is also equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi y omega e raise to the power j omega n d omega. And y n is also equal to this. So, y n must have this expression from our reasoning of eigen sequences and y n must have this expression from the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. And therefore, it is very clear that y omega must be equal to x omega times h omega, very important result. So, here you have an interpretation of the result before we even derive it mathematically. The interpretation is that we have thought of the input as a linear combination of several rotating complex numbers, rotating with different angular velocities, normalized angular velocities omega. The output is going 
going to be the a linear combination of the same complex exponentials, but the complex exponentials are going to get multiplied by their eigenvalue h omega to h omega and then you are going to integrate this over the omegas. And here we are using four things in the context of linear shift invariant systems, additivity, homogeneity, shift invariance and finally, the Eigen sequence property that is e raise the power j omega n when it goes into the LSI system comes out as h omega times e raise the power j omega n. Now, here we have seen effectively that when you convolve x n and h n and then take the discrete time Fourier transform, it is equivalent to multiplying the discrete time Fourier transforms of the individual sequence. Now, this was in the context of an LSI system and we now have a beautiful interpretation for it, but we want to prove this in general. So, what we are saying is convolution in time, convolution in the natural domain, it could be time, corresponds to multiplication in the frequency domain. So, you see here, we are now introducing this whole idea of domains. You know, the same signal or the same sequence can be viewed in different domains. All this while, we have been viewing it in what is called the natural domain the domain in which that signal occurs, that could be time or it could be space or whatever. But we can take the sequence of the signal to a different domain where you can equivalently view it. Now, you see this is a reversible process as we have seen. You can go from the natural domain to the frequency domain by using the discrete time Fourier transformation and you can come back from the discrete time Fourier transform to the natural domain or the frequency domain to the natural domain by using the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. So, it is invertible, yes. Now, we need to prove this, we have proved this or we have explained or we have justified this in the context of an LSI system, but let us prove it in general algebraically. So, let us prove this, prove in general that if I take x 1 n and x 2 n and if they respectively have the d t of t's x 1 and 2 of omega and if x 1 convolved with x 2 also has a dt of t, let us call it y, <coughs> then y omega is equal to x 1 omega times x 2 omega. You want to prove this in general. You want to prove it algebraically. Now, that is easy. In fact, Consider the dt of t of x1 convolved with x2. Of course, it is summation k running from minus to plus infinity, summation l running from minus to plus infinity. Now, you need to first evaluate the convolution at the point k. And then multiply this by e raise the power minus j omega k. And I have assured myself that this double summation converges. That is why I said that the dtft of the convolution exists. Now, if it does, let us collect all the summations into one. So, Clearly, this becomes summation k over all the integers, summation l over all the integers, x 1 l, x 2 k minus l e raise the power minus j omega k. And we use the standard trick. You see, the troublesome term is this. So, let us put k minus l equal to m. So, now what we are going to do is 
consider instead of L and K, we are going to move to L and M. We know that L and K independently run over all the integers. And of course, from this we also see that M is equal to, I am sorry, we want to eliminate K. So, K is equal to L plus M. You see, when L is of course as it is, so L runs independently over all the integers. But what about M? For a fixed L, when k runs over all the integers, so does m. And therefore, a double summation where l and k independently run over all the integers is equivalent to a double summation on l and m, both of them independently running over all the integers. And therefore, this becomes summation on all l summation on all m, x1 l, x2 m, e raised to the power minus j omega l plus m. And of course, it is very easy to decompose this. This is e raised to the power minus j omega l into e raised to the power minus j omega m. Now, we observe that it is only these two terms that depend on l and it is only these two terms that depend on m. I can bring the summation on m inside to act only on the terms that depend on m and I have <coughs> summation L x 1 L e raised to the power minus j omega L into summation m x 2 m e raised to the power minus j omega m, but this is very familiar, this is x 2 omega. So, this is x 2 omega, it is independent of L and I can bring it outside. And once I bring it outside, I see that this is nothing but x 1 omega here. So, there we are. So, this becomes x 2 omega times summation L over minus 2 plus infinity x 1 L e raised to the power minus j omega L and that is x 2 omega into x 1 omega. So, we have proved this. So, we have a very significant result here. But when you convolve two sequences, if both of them have discrete time Fourier transforms and of course, then assuming that the convolution does do, the discrete time Fourier transform of the convolution is the product of the discrete time Fourier transforms of the individual sequence. 